Hi everyone, welcome back. In the past I've talked about manipulating photos and various things that you can do with imagery on your Canvas course, but I've learned something new in HTML that I really want to share with you. And so we're just going to get into that. So the first thing, you can see my page right here. I have a banner. I have an image that spans, you know, it's about 75% the width of the page right there. And I want to show you what's really interesting about this image is that it changes based on the screen size. It'll actually replace itself with a different image if the monitor is a different size than the one that I'm using right now that we're seeing. And so to demonstrate this, I'm just going to take this browser and I'm going to drag it and we're going to resize it. And when it gets to a certain size, the image actually swaps out with a new one. And then if we get to a really small screen, which would duplicate something like a cell phone screen, then it changes to a different image altogether. And in this case, I chose an image that's more vertical. And so it takes up the vertical real estate. But if I had a vertical image that was 75% of the width on a very large monitor, then that would just be too big of an image. And so in this case, on my large monitor, I have a very wide and narrow image. And then on the small monitor, I have an image that's a bit taller. And then I selected a different image for writing between, something kind of squarish. It's a really interesting effect. It's not one that students are really going to notice because they're not going to be changing their content from a small screen to a large screen or anywhere in between. They're either going to be on their mobile device or they're going to be on a laptop and their screen is going to be what it is, but you have control over what they're seeing. And I just think that's fascinating. Before we take a look at how I did that, I'm just going to scroll down the bottom of the page here. So I have this image and I'm going to teach you also how to put a radius, how to put rounded corners on your image. And you can change the roundness of the corners to something subtle like this, or you can make it really round, kind of like how my webcam is right now, just a circle. So let's dive in. I'm going to go ahead and edit this page. And you'll first want to start out with three images. So you can upload images if you already have the images in mind. You can also go over to unsplash.com and I could download this image, for example. In fact, I could even take this image and I could crop it three different ways. Maybe I could take one image and I can crop it really narrow for the big monitor. And for the medium sized monitor, I could just use the square. And then for the cell phone, maybe I'll just take a portrait crop of the image. You can also go into your canvas course and just select the image icon here. You can browse on Splash if you wanted to just search their repository and you could download it right onto the page or you can upload your images from your computer. So if I take this image, for example, and I insert this into my Canvas course, then I'm going to go into the HTML code, the editor right here, and I can see the image that I just now put in. So here's the source and then there's a website for that image. And I'm just going to cut that out and then delete that. So you're going to want the source. And the source, if I were to hop over to a new tab and paste it, then you can see the image right there. So any image that's on the internet, whether it's in your Canvas course or a website or a blog or on Unsplash, it has a unique URL. So that's the code that you're going to need to make this effect happen, the URL. And if you upload an image into Canvas, then you're going to have a URL and it's going to be your domain slash courses, the course number, it's going to be files, and then a different number, and then preview. And so I'll just tell you right now that the, th the pictures that I have, this first one right here is the landscape one of the city of Chicago, the skyline picture that's really wide. And then that picture that's square would be this middle one right here. And in the HTML, you can't really make sense of it. It's just a bunch of numbers. And then that one that's taller, the landscape one, that would be this link right down here. So you need to know which link goes to which picture. And then let me just clean up some stuff here. What I have is a tag called picture and I don't need, I don't need that space. I can delete that. So I have picture here and then the end of the picture is right there. All three pictures are within this tag, this HTML tag called picture. And the default image is actually the mobile device image, that tall one with the student in the street. And so there's the image. I set the image to be a width of 75%, meaning however large the screen is, it's going to take 75% of that width. And then the display block, margin left, mar margin right auto, all that is is me saying I want it centered as opposed to on the left side. And then I did put a maximum width and I have other videos that talk about min widths and max widths. I don't want the image to be too large. And so for right now, I can actually delete some of this code. Canvas is going to put it back in for me. But what we're seeing is that I have an image, all of the style that we just now talked about, and then the source. The source is just the URL for that image. So that's the detail for that default image. 
and then I have another tag here that's called source and then I have a media and then I put a minimum width of 500 pixels so if the picture is at least 500 pixels it's actually going to swap out from that default image and it's going to use this image right here and that's the image that's more squarish and then when it gets to a thousand pixels wide so a larger monitor a laptop or a computer screen or a regular computer monitor then I have this other source so thousand pixels and that's the image that I want and you can actually make those max widths instead of min widths and that changes it that means that this image is going to take up the screen until it gets to a certain width and then beyond that it's going to go to the next image and so if I were to set this to minimum width then once the screen reaches 501 pixels it would switch to this other screen but I have it the opposite way I have it so that from 0 pixels up until 499 pixels you have the default image and then once that width is at least 500 pixels it changes to that medium picture and it'll stay at that medium picture until 500 pixels to 999 pixels and then add a thousand pixels then it's going to swap out to the large picture which is the skyline of Chicago that really wide one so it pretty much ensures that a mobile device is not going to see that really wide one and you can use this now I just chose random pictures that I happen to have in the course but you can create different banners three different banners that will look different and render different based on the screen so if you create a banner that looks good on a desktop computer it might not look good in those same dimensions on a mobile device so maybe you recreate that banner and upload three different banners you could even have four or five different banners but maybe even two banners so you can have a small banner and a large banner so if they're on a mobile device a tablet or a phone then they'll get the small version of the banner and then once they graduate up to a Chromebook or laptop or large computer screen then they'll get that larger iteration and you do that just with this code right here you can copy this code I'm gonna have it on my blog so look for the link in the description below and grab that code and put it into your course tinker around with replacing the pictures make your own banners you can change the min width to a max width change the numbers of the width to really try and explore and figure out that functionality so next I have some boilerplate and then I have a couple images and just to remind you if I scroll down here I have an image and this is a seascape and I put a rounded corner on the image and I thought that's interesting that's something that people might not know about so let's explore that I'm actually going to create a copy of that image maybe even two copies and so the first one I'm not going to put a radius on it at all the second one I have a radius of 25 that's what I showed you now let's change this radius to 100 pixels and so the radius meaning the circle is going to be bigger and so the corners are going to be even more rounded than this one in fact let's even do one more and let's make it really subtle and so this will be super subtle maybe 10 pixels maybe five you could try five try 10 see what you like so we'll go no radius then we'll go 10 25 100 and then the 50 percent so 50 percent is different than selecting a pixel value it's essentially saying I want it to be half the width of the picture which makes it a circle now if the picture is rectangle if it's longer or wider than it is the other dimension then it's going to be an oblong circle if it's a perfect square then it'll be a perfect circle so let's go ahead and save that and again that's so I got this from unsplash it's just a picture that I found this morning on unsplash there's the source you put the picture in and then you just add this to the picture tag the image tag you put style equals put a radius and then set the width to whatever width that you want let's go ahead and save it and let's take a look down at the bottom of the page and let's find those pictures so here's the default picture it's sharp it's rectangle it has 90 degree edges on those corners and here's the picture that has a 10 pixel radius meaning from the edge from the x-axis to the y-axis that's five pixels that's 10 pixels right there and then the 25 pixel will be two and a half times more round I don't know if that's how you would say it more round than the 10 pixel image and let's go back down to 100 and there you can really see a, a difference that's what 100 pixels look like a, a 100 pixel radius and then I put 50 percent and it just completely rounds the corner if you were to divide that into quarters then it's a perfect circle then it's perfectly round from the top center to the middle on the right and then from the middle right to the bottom center and it's just perfect with no flat edges 
Let's see if we can find another picture that, I, if I would have thought ahead of time, I would have prepared a picture, but let's try and find something that's more squarish. I'll just go on Unsplash right here, just typing in square. I guess we have some square things, so let's give one of these a try. Perhaps this one here, this architecture. I'll go ahead and put that in there. We're going to go to, now I could go to Image Options, and I could put that to a certain percentage, such as 400 pixels wide. Looks like it, it's not a perfect square. It's almost there, 400 by 383, but it's pretty close. Let's just give it a pass. And I'm gonna hop down here. So I have my image and I'm gonna click style. That's allowing me to do inline CSS. And I'm gonna go to border, radius, and let's do that at 50%. And then I have the width and the height down here. Now if I wanted, that's HTML and I could write that in CSS if I wanted to. I just could put width 400 pixels and let's go ahead and save that and take a look. It's a few pixels off but for the most part that's how I can make a square image to be perfectly circle. And if I wanted that to be perfectly circle instead of kind of an oval like what we see up here then I'm gonna have to go into a photo editor and just make sure it's cropped to be a perfect square. And once I have that squared off, then I can make that a circle just with that one line of code. So two very simple things that you can do with images, just with a few characters of code. But the applications, there's so many things that you could do using these techniques. I would love to hear your ideas. How would this code really inform you on how you're creating your content in your Canvas courses? Let me know in the comments below and maybe even t share this video with your students. They could be using these techniques in their discussion posts. If they upload media images into their discussion posts, then they could be using these techniques to make their discussion post imagery more dynamic and responsive. I'm going to share this video with my students, in fact. Let's get our students to up their game as well. So again, thanks for joining me and until next time. Happy Disney morning!